Hey again, how you doing? You know, I just have to say at the beginning of this, this is a really different way uh, of teaching for me. It's creating these short little videos as we go. Um, kind of interesting and odd. Uh, it's kind of, yeah, let's see where this goes. Uh, so, you know, one good uh, part of this is I'm really learning along with you guys. I'm reading along with the book and then saying, oh, here's a part where I want to add something to add some relevance to this. Uh, and these videos will come in a bunch of different forms. Some of them will be kind of lectures like what I was giving you uh, in some of the previous ones about Rene Descartes. Others will be more... Um, sort of what I would call meta level. You know, what are we doing in this course? What do I hope you learn? Trying to teach you some skills along the way as well. And that's really what this video will, will sort of be about. So specifically, making learning engaging. You know, when I was thinking about this course and this fall offering, obviously um, we've got the COVID thing going on and we have online learning going on and you guys are now, you know, in the middle of it and you were in the middle of it already last term. You experienced, you know, sort of what happens when a bunch of educators quickly try to transform to online. The next step for us educators is to get it right, <laughs> you know, to do online learning in, in a powerful way. Uh, and I honestly think that we need to have you guys involved as we try to figure out what that is because there can be theoretical reasons of something that will work, but you guys know what really works. You know what it's like to be the student. Uh, and so part of what I thought is this might be a meta theme of our course this year. Uh, us all talking about online learning, by the way, let me mention um, it's a passion of mine. A lot of my research is focused on how to use technology uh, to create deep learning experiences. And I'm also very interested in this topic, how to make learning engaging. And so, you know, to some extent, I have expertise, you have experience from the student side. Uh, let's work together and, and kind of figure some stuff out. But, but why would we do this? What's the context? That's what I want to talk to you about. So I'm going to connect this in with what you're learning here. Um, so, you know, here's, here's, your, um, here's what we don't want to happen, but what happens all too often, right? People are, are bored in classroom and, and they're not going to be receiving information. If the textbook's boring you, if the lectures are boring you, you know, you're just not going to get a lot out of it. Uh, and this is true in, you know, sitting in a class when people are looking at you like this. But as we move online, now you have two other very powerful forces. So first of all, just procrastination, getting around to doing the online lectures to begin with, right? Oh, I should be doing this. I should be working on this activity and you feel guilty and you panic and you make excuses and you procrastinate. You know, there's this horrible circle and you really need to kind of get around that circle uh, and start doing something. And that's a challenge with online learning. So how could, you know, how can we help people with that? And then of course, once you're sitting in front of your computer learning, your computer is firing notifications at you. And you know, somebody shared your message and somebody posted this and continually trying to pull your mind somewhere else. And so you're in this continually distracted state and that makes it very hard for, to learn as well. Now, the sort of answer to all this is if we could create a really engaging learning experience. You know, you have no problem going back to those shows you love on Netflix because they're engaging. You don't procrastinate. They are what you use to procrastinate, right? Um, and so what if we could make learning really engaging as well, you know, which is what it should be. It should be fun. It should be exciting. It should be engaging. What if we could make it that way? Um, how could we make it that way? What can we do to make students want to go back to their learning um, and, and not be distracted while they're learning because they're really enjoying what's going on? Um, so there's a problem, right? That, that's a question you can ask. How can we improve uh, online education? This falls into the context when we're talking about basic research and applied research. This is really applied research and it's, it's more specifically something we tend to call translational research. So what translational research means is every now and then somebody does identify a problem like this. Uh, online learning, you know, is maybe not as good as it should be. How can we make it better? That's a problem. And then what they do is they go to the, the research, the basic research. Well, what, can, what do we know about attention? What do we know about engagement? What do we know about distraction? Um, can, we, can we take things we've learned in research and now put them 
to work in the real world? Can we apply that research and solve real world problems? Okay, and that's translational research. And this is, by the way, where I live uh, on the spectrum. I was a basic researcher for many years, kind of continue to be to some extent, but a lot of my work involves trying to apply research proven things to um, the classroom. Uh, university classrooms and, and to some extent even K-12 classrooms when possible. So I want to involve you in this process. I want you to be part of this fun. Okay, so this is going to be an ongoing theme. We're going to have sort of two projects in the class. One is going to be a peer scholar um, project where you're going to have to learn a little bit about some of these things and, and write something and we'll be much more clear about that um, as we get there. Um, and the second one is going to be a real, what we call authentic learning situation. Um, basically, what you've learned in Peer Scholar, uh, there's going to be one of two opportunities to actually apply that, to talk to somebody who's in the learning game and give them advice, essentially act as a consultant, if, if it were a research kind of consultant. Okay, so that's gonna be a fun thing we're all doing together. Now, in order to do this, I have to introduce you to Google Scholar. <clears throat> um, if you don't know Google Scholar yet, just scholar.google.com. This is um, a tool you can use to search scientific articles. And as part of U of T, you have access to a lot of these articles. Um, and so you can actually um, search for anything you want. But the tricky thing is, it's all about the search terms. Um, scientists talk about things. So for example, you know, I showed you the bored student. Well, if you want to know how to make non-bored students, what do you search? You know, what's the term? And, I, and I'll tell you now, the term is engagement or student engagement or fostering student engagement. Um, that term engagement has become this sort of critical keyword that people use when they're talking about that issue. And when you're new to a field, you don't always know these keywords. And so it can be hard to kind of find what you want. So for ours, I've, I've suggested a few keywords here that can get you going. And, and let me actually just kind of show you what we're talking about here. So if we skip over to Google Chrome, um, you'll see why I'm there in a moment, but here's Google Scholar. Um, and so let's say we put engagement, or let's say we say fostering student engagement. And we could find a number of papers here related to this. Uh, and so they might have different, um, inter in this case, employing intergroup competition in multi-touch design-based learning. Um, so they're just trying different things to try to, you know, parental influences on achieving motivation and student engagement, etc. You can find all sorts of technology use, self-directing student engagement. Um, you're finding all sorts of stuff here that can tell you more about student engagement. Um, I'm gonna throw in another one that I like, uh, which is something I just know about and it's, and it's relevant to what we're going to be doing. So authentic learning. So these would be um, uh, exa examples that relate to this notion of authentic learning too. And authentic learning is one approach to um, dealing with, with this. Uh, authentic learning, dealing with engagement. What authentic learning is, says is sort of this. If you give students some project to do, but they know from the outset that they're just kind of going through hoops, they're reading some things, they're writing, and, and then once it's all done, nobody's gonna care about their project. Uh, that's how many schoolwork projects are, right? Th those are not authentic. Um, and, and it's understandable why a student might have trouble getting into such a project. An authentic project is one where what the student does may actually have an impact after the activity, you know, after the class-based thing, somebody or, or in some way that data, that, that project could be relevant, could be useful, could actually change something. Uh, and when students are doing that, so one example I use in some of my courses is we have students create Wikipedia pages uh, on historical psychology figures, for example. And when you're creating a Wikipedia page, well, that's your project, but then it exists. It continues to exist and other people see that page and, and they're learning from it. And so what you're creating is something of value. Uh, and when you're creating something of value, it's easier to get more engaged, more interested and, and more enthusiastic about it. Okay, and so you could find that from various um, papers that you could read about that. This is the approach we're going to be using in this class. Um, authentic learning, so specifically if I kind of 
flip back. Well, I, I want to show you one other thing too, just so just so you know, because this could be relevant to you as well. Um, this is me, a, a chapter I've created um, that's focused on this issue of engagement. And these are things you'll see me trying to do in my lectures, trying to make them either relevant, interesting, fun, or social. These are ways to try to engage the online mind. So this, just to say that, you know, this is really something that, that I'm very interested in uh, as well um, and, and have thought about a little bit. Okay, so one of the things I want you to get used to is Google Scholar. No, it's there. No, you can use it to find scientific articles. Um, I've given you some terms. If you want to start searching and thinking about online learning and, and, and reading and learning, feel free. You can use some of that for your peer scholar activity. Um, here's something about authentic lear learning, which I just described to you, in case you're interested in that. And specifically, work integrated learning. The idea of work integrated learning is a specific kind of authentic learning. So for example, I told you about the Wikipedia page as authentic learning. That's one way to do it. Um, but another way is to actually involve people in some work context. Uh, let them interact with somebody who has a challenge in their job, in their workplace, and have them try to help those people with a real world problem. And that's what we're going to do. You're going to have a choice of these two, one of these two contexts in which um, you are going to essentially act as a consultant, um, taking the information you're learning from the course and from what you're reading, and then using that to give one of these entities some advice. One group is the Durham Flight Center. They are not online learning. So if, if online learning is not your thing, um, you prefer the more traditional kind of approach, that's what they do. They do a sort of sit down, students in a class, they go through PowerPoints, but they literally feel like they are doing a horrible job. They feel like their materials and their approach is not working, that students are not engaged, and they would love some ideas about how they can up their game. Uh, and so that's one context you can look at. We'll, by the way, we'll have somebody from the Durham Flight Center. Uh, I'll, I'll do a little interview video. You'll get a sense of their challenge, their problem, what they do every day. And yeah, you can choose to help them. And, and by the way, so some of the people who, whose selections they, they select, they will ultimately pick a top one, a top two, and a top three. Uh, and if you're in that top three, I think you're going to get to play on their flight simulator. So if you're into flight simulators, there you go. Um, the other one is really fascinating, I think. Really, really fascinating. And that is the Ontario government. Um, they're trying to tackle this issue of online learning. With COVID, it could be the way a lot of students learn for a long time, especially in the more senior grades. How can they do it right? You know, you've experienced it. Did they do it right in the winter? Could it be improved? What ways could it be better? Uh, and so this will be your chance to, again, do some research, do some reading, what you're learning in the course about memory and attention and how the mind works and then give them some advice about how they can up their game in terms of online learning that, that's delivered in the province. So again, very cool. In either of these cases, the ideas you present, you know, could literally change the learning experience for, for, for students, you know, many students in some cases. Uh, and so that's kind of cool. I present this all to you to kind of introduce you to the project at a little higher level but also um, within the context of what you're learning in the textbook here. Basic learning, uh, basic research, applied research, and this idea of translational research um, and, and the importance it can have to actually allow the, the things we've learned to have an impact in the world. And we're all going to be part of that uh, in this course. Alrighty, cool, cool. Out for this one, bye-bye.